and welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Tuesday, November 23rd. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. And here are the news stories for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. The U.S. Senate has approved almost $4.6 billion to settle the long-standing claims brought by American Indians and black farmers against the government. The money has been held up for months in the Senate as Democrats and Republicans squabble over how to pay for it. The two class action lawsuits were filed over a decade ago. $3.4 billion will go to Indian landowners who claim they were swindled or mismanaged out of royalties by the Department of Interior. The legislation was approved in the Senate by voice vote last Friday and sent to the House of Representatives where it's been passed before. Eloise Cobell, a member of Montana's Blackfeet tribe and a the lead plaintiff in the Indian case said that it took her breath away when she found out the Senate had passed the bill. She was feeling despondent after the chamber had tried and failed to pass the legislation many times, and two people who have been beneficiaries or who would have been beneficiaries have passed away in her reservation just in the last week. The FBI and the Bureau of Indian Affairs are working with an Albuquerque company owned and operated by a Navajo woman to expedite fingerprinting and background checks on prospective workers, particularly those who might come into contact with children for American Indian tribes and tribal organizations. The FBI has been handling fingerprints submitted through the BIA since 1996. Prints generally were done the old-fashioned way, rolling someone's finger in ink, rolling the ink prints into a card, then mailing the cards to the FBI for the check. Under a new agreement, Personnel Security Consultants, Inc., known as PSC, will submit prints by electronic scanner, which will speed up the process for criminal history checks mandated by the Indian Child Protection and Family Violence Prevention Act. Michelle Justice, the Navajo woman who owns PSC, said her firm will be the go-between that provides fingerprinting technical assistance and training services for more than 200 tribes. A northern Idaho man has been convicted of assaulting a state trooper during an attempted traffic stop last year that resulted in one death. Ricardo, Ricardo Daniel Rodriguez faces up to six months in prison at a December 6th sentencing hearing. Authorities say the 39-year-old Rodriguez and 50-year-old Randall Vernon Ellenwood got out of their car and confronted trooper, uh, trooper Jeffrey Talbot during an attempted traffic stop for drunken driving in May of 2009. Police said Ellenwood and Rodriguez were seriously physically battering Talbot when the officer fired his weapon at the unarmed men. Ellenwood died at the scene. The FBI investigated the shooting because the chase began on the Nez Perce Reservation and Ellenwood and Rodriguez are tribal members. Talbot was cleared to return to work. A former chief of the St. Regis Mohawk tribe has been indicted on federal drug charges after U.S. Border Patrol agents said he was caught transporting nearly 100 pounds of marijuana. Federal officials said Philip Tarbell of Hogansburg was in a minivan stopped on November 12th by Border Patrol agents at a checkpoint near Schroon Lake in the Adriandacks. Federal officials say agents found about 95 pounds of marijuana and two hockey bags. The 60-year-old Tar, uh, Tarbell was charged with possession with intent to distribute marijuana. He was released after posting $10,000 in bail. Tarbell was a leader in the former tribal government for the St. Regis Mohawk Reservation on the Canadian border side. <clears throat> Governor David Patterson confirmed last week that he's working to reach an agreement to approve construction of an Indian-owned casino in the Catskills Mountains. The potential deal would allow a casino to be built in Sullivan County as part of a land claim settlement with the Stockbridge Muncie Band of Mohicans. The Wisconsin-based tribe has long considered the Catskills their ancestral land. A casino would bring jobs to the economically depressed area and hundreds of millions of dollars a year to the cash-strapped state. The idea, however, faces significant federal and legal hurdles and has eluded agreement for more than a decade. Several substantial issues would have to be addressed before Patterson could seal a deal by the time he leaves office on December 31st. For example, the federal government would have to give its approval for an out-of-state tribe to build a casino in New York. 
A federal judge denied a request by the Alaska Federation of Natives to intervene in the write-in election lawsuit brought by U.S. Senate candidate Joe Miller. In a brief order last week, Judge Ralph Beastline said the state is responsible for and fully capable of representing the interests of all its voting citizens or all its citizens. Miller last week sued election officials seeking to exclude write-in ballots that stray from the exact spelling of a candidate's name. Elections officials have uh, accepted ballots that contain what they call minor misspellings. AFN spokesman claims Miller's lawsuit seeks to disenfranchise Alaska natives by invalidating their votes if they did not spell Murkowski's name perfectly. And the winner of that Senate race was dis declared late last week as well with Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski stunning right in victory. A big rebuke in Alaska's other favorite, or a big re rebuke to Alaska's other favorite daughter, Sarah Palin. The former governor and a 2008 vice presidential candidate backs scores of congressional and gubernatorial candidates this election year, a sought-after endorsement that helped lift several Republicans to victory. But she and her husband, Todd, invested far more time and money for Joe Miller, a Tea Party-backed challenger who shocked Murkowski, the incumbent, by capturing the Republican Senate nomination there in Alaska. Murkowski's write-in win over Miller confirmed last week was a rebuke for Palin in her home turf by voters who knew her best. The latest chapter in a bitter family feud that at times seemed more personal than political. It's also an embarrassment to Palin considering a White House bid. Just last week, the Republican Murkowski said she would not support Palin for president. Navajo President Joe Shirley Jr. has approved an agreement that quantifies the tribe's water rights in the lower Colorado River Basin. Tribal lawmakers voted in favor of the settlement earlier this month. It gives the tribe 31,000 acre feet of water a year from the basin. Any unclaimed flows from the Little Colorado River and nearly unlimited access to two aquifers beneath the reservation. Critics had lobbied Shirley to veto this settlement, saying the tribe shouldn't waive future claims to the water and should demand more now. Shirley spokesman George Hardeen said late last week that the president has confidence in those who negotiate this settlement on behalf of the tribe. The settlement still needs approval from the Hopi tribe, the state of Arizona, and Congress. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you all for joining with us. You come back again soon. Miigwech.